Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting homemade exponential equation with complex numbers. So we have 1 plus i to the power x equals i, and we're going to be solving for x values. So I'm hoping that if you dealt with complex numbers before, you probably know this fact, which is 1 plus i squared equals 2i. Let's go ahead and explain that real quick. If you square 1 plus i from a plus b quantity squared from algebra, you get 1 squared plus i squared plus 2i. But i squared by definition is negative 1, so 1 plus i squared is 0, and you end up with 2i. So we do know a number whose square equals 2i, but we got to find a number whose square equals i. So, do you think we can just divide both sides by 2 and go that way? Oopsies, I wrote a 2, that should be an x. So, are we able to find x from here easily? Unfortunately not. And, just to show you what the solution looks like, I included the Wolfram Alpha solution here. And you can see that the solution is not going to be very straightforward. But, notice that we have the log of something at the bottom, which is supposed to be the natural log. So, it is ln. But anyways, I'm going to give you a better looking solution than this one. So let's go ahead and proceed. So our equation is 1 plus i to the power x equals i. If we are given an equation like 1 plus i to the power y equals 2i, then we do know the solution. The solution is y equals 2. Is that the only solution? Obviously, we should talk about infinitely many solutions, but this is not the time to do that. Let's go ahead and solve this problem. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to write 1 plus i in polar form. So to be able to write it, I do need two pieces of information. Let's go ahead and graph it first on the real imaginary coordinate plane. 1 plus i can be written as 1 plus 1i, so it's 1 comma 1. It's represented by a point on the coordinate plane. And its distance from 0 is defined as the radius or the modulus. So in this case, since we have 1, 1, and this is our number 1 plus i, then r would basically be square root of 2. Make sense? Pythagorean theorem, right? And then the second piece of information we need is the angle that it makes with the positive x-axis, which is theta, and theta in this case would be pi over 4. So that's what we need because these two pieces of information gives us a complex number z in r times e to the power i theta form, which uses Euler's formula. Okay, great. So this is really cool because from this you, we can get a lot of nice identities such as i to the power e to the power i pi equals negative one, so on and so forth. Anyways, so let's go ahead and write one plus i this way since we already know r and theta. One plus i can be written as r times e to the power i times pi over four. If I just leave it at that, this would be the principal branch, but there are infinitely many branches because this is basically kind of like a multi-valued function or stuff. So what I'm going to do is to get infinitely many values, I'm going to add multiples of 2 pi because you can make rotations on the circle and then whatever your angle is, you can just add 2 pi and multiples of 2 pi to it. So I'm going to represent it with 2 and pi. Okay. And now we're going to put that angle in parentheses, which is our theta in general form. Make sense? So now we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and raise this to the power x and then set it equal to i. But we also need to write i in polar form. So let's go ahead and do that real quick as well. Well, i is just 0 plus i. So it's modulus r is going to be 1. And the angle is going to be pi over 2. So i can be written as e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2k pi. This time I'm also adding the multiples of 2 pi, but using a different integer because n and k don't have to depend on each other. At the end, I'll show you some specific solutions. Okay, so given these two things, let's go ahead and put them together in our equation. Okay, so we had 1 plus i to the power x equals i. 
Replace 1 plus i with that, square root of 2 times e to the power i, pi over 4, plus 2n pi. And then you're going to raise it to the power x. And set it equal to e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2k pi. What a beautiful equation, right? You just got to solve for x. But when you raise it to the power x, all you have to do is multiply the exponent by x, but square root of 2 will also be affected by that. So, before we multiply inside by x, let's go ahead and take the natural log of both sides. I think it would make sense if we did that. Also, one thing that would simplify our process is to simplify these expressions a little bit by making a common denominator, so on and so forth. So that's going to, for example, this one is going to give us 8n plus 1 times pi over 4. And this guy over here without the i, of course. And this guy is going to give me 4k plus 1 multiplied by pi over 4. So it's kind of like um, multiples of pi over 4, but those are integers that leave a remainder of 1, which is basically uh, 1 mod 4, and these are 1 mod 8. So we're working different mods. Make sense? Hopefully that it does. Now, let's go ahead and ln both sides. So we're going to natural log both sides, ln e to the power i times 8n plus 1 pi over 4. And then this is going to be ln, of course, there's an x here. And then this one is going to be ln 2 e to the power i times 4k plus 1 pi over 4. Okay, too many parentheses. Now, when you ln or log both sides, this power is going to move. That's actually the reason, the very reason we do this. So we're going to get the following from here, x times ln. Now, notice that we can separate this into two lns. So let's write it like this. ln a times b can be written as ln a plus ln b. So this is our a, by the way. So I'm going to write it as ln square root of 2, and then plus, and x is going to be multiplied by the whole thing, ln e to the power something, right? But ln e to the power something is just going to be that thing. So let me allow me to write that thing directly, okay? So like this and like that. And the right-hand side is just going to move to the front, and ln e is going to be 1. So we're going to end up with i times 4k plus 1 pi. I could also put the i at the end. doesn't matter. No big deal. And we get the following expression. All right. Great. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's great, but it kind of is. So this can be written as ln 2 to the power 1 half, and then 1 half ln 2. So what I'm going to do next is multiply both sides by 4 to get rid of the fraction. So here's what, what it's going to look like. x times... And when you multiply 1 half by 4, that's going to give you 2 ln 2. And then we're going to get rid of, let me just write the i last, pi i, like this. And then this is going to equal 4k plus 1 multiplied by pi i. You see, we got rid of the 4s. Everything looks better, hopefully, right? Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to basically um, multiply, well, not multiply, divide, okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to divide both sides by this 2 ln 2 thing. And that's basically going to give us the answer. But I want to show you some specific solutions here. Uh, for example, what happens if k is equal to 0 and n, equal, n equals 0? From here, we kind of get like a specific solution. x equals pi i divided by 2 ln 2 plus pi i. So kind of like interesting, and you can definitely plug it in to check whether this is going to give you what you're looking for. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.